In the context of Ethereum's permissionless blockchain, validators are incentivized to act rationally, but external incentives like MEV can tempt them to deviate from honest protocol participation. The authors demonstrate commitment attacks on LMD Ghost, a core part of Ethereum's consensus mechanism, which can disrupt the intended balance of power between proposers and voters. These attacks exploit the head vote reward mechanism in the presence of rational attesters, requiring no control over the network or large stake. The attacks involve manipulating the reward system for timely votes, coercing voters from previous slots into supporting conflicting blocks at no cost to the adversary. To address these vulnerabilities, the authors propose a novel reward mechanism to restore the voters' role as a check against proposer power, making it fairer and more decentralized. This mitigation is practical for implementation in Ethereum and addresses the identified vulnerabilities in LMD Ghost. The research paper discusses a novel attack on Ethereum's consensus mechanism, specifically targeting the reorg resilience. This selfish mining inspired attack involves a staking pool controlling attesters in every slot, incentivized to follow an adversary's instructions. The attack succeeds when there are more adversarial slots than honest ones, enabling the reorg of non adversarial blocks. A new reward mechanism, called DAG votes, is proposed to mitigate this attack and ensure a fairer reward distribution. DAG votes decentralize the head vote reward by using a committee of attesters to determine timely votes, making it harder for an adversary to manipulate rewards. This solution also addresses the issue of solo validators losing head vote rewards when the leader is offline. The practical version of this solution is estimated to have a slight overhead and is backward compatible with the Ethereum infrastructure. The authors further investigate the effect of the reward mechanism on the security of the LMD Ghost protocol in the presence of rational validators. They highlight the history of attacks on the protocol, including the balancing attack and the avalanche attack, which were addressed with patches such as proposer boosting and equivocation discounting. The author's model of validators shares similarities with honest but rational validators, who delay blocks to capture more maximum extractable value, MEV while ensuring timely inclusion in the canonical chain. However, their model assumes rational validators can explicitly disobey protocol rules that are not enforceable via slashing. The authors draw from game theory and consensus protocols, citing works on secret sharing and multi-party computation, coalition safe equilibria, and the bar, Byzantine, altruistic, rational, model of protocol participants. They define their model, where lambda is the security parameter, and an event has negligible probability if its probability is O, 1, poly, lambda. They introduce the concept of state machine replication, SMR, consensus protocols, where a set of nodes called validators agree on a growing sequence of transactions or blocks called the ledger. In their model, each block extends a parent block through its hash, and a block B extends B, if B lies on the path from B to the genesis block B0. The authors define the adversary A as an efficient algorithm that controls a subset of validators, which can violate consensus rules in an arbitrary fashion. The remaining validators are either honest, following the prescribed protocol, or rational, taking the action providing the largest expected payoff. The authors assume a synchronous network, where the adversary can control the delivery time of messages sent by rational and honest validators up to a known delay upper bound increment. They normalize increment to be one and adopt a lockstep communication model, where messages can only be sent at discrete intervals. The authors define security for an SMR protocol, which requires safety and liveness properties. Safety ensures that for any times t and t, and validators val and val, either the confirmed chain of val at time t is a prefix of the confirmed chain of val, at time t, or vice versa. Liveness ensures that if a transaction TX is input to a rational or honest validator at some time T, then TX is included in the confirmed chain of any validator at time T, is greater than or equal to T plus TKIF. Finally, the authors introduce the LMD Ghost protocol, which proceeds in epochs with 32 slots, each with duration 3 increment. A randomness beacon called RANDAO divides the validator set into 32 disjoint committees of size W assigned to unique slots within the epoch, and selects a validator from each committee as the unique leader for its slot. 
In the Ethereum blockchain, validators employ the LMD ghost fork choice rule to identify a canonical chain of blocks. The leader proposes a new block, and a tester's sign and broadcast head votes for the block at the tip of the canonical chain. The fork choice rule iteratively selects the child block with the largest weight, where the weight is the number of unique head votes plus a proposal boost if the tree contains a block proposed for the current slot. The Ethereum reward mechanism consists of inclusion and attestation rewards, where the inclusion reward is for including attestations in a proposed block, and the attestation reward is for attesting to a validator's view of the canonical chain. The simple attack in the presence of solo validators exploits Ethereum's reward mechanism to incentivize validators to submit votes favorable to the adversary. The attack induces a game between rational validators and a Byzantine adversary, where the validators can build new blocks, send votes, and delay or withhold messages. The research examines the security vulnerabilities in Ethereum's reward mechanism, specifically focusing on the LMD GHOST fork choice rule. It introduces the concept of compliant blocks and votes, which are crucial for the extended game. Validators observe the protocol, judging blocks and votes as compliant based on the compliant tip. The adversary proposes compliant blocks and excludes non-compliant votes, leading to a sub-game perfect Nash equilibrium where the adversary succeeds in violating the security of LMD Ghost. The analysis demonstrates the applicability of the attacks to Ethereum with single-slot finality and other similar protocols, highlighting the need for a more robust security mechanism. In the context of Ethereum's reward mechanism, the behavior of staking pools in the presence of attacks is analyzed. A staking pool is modeled as a single entity controlling a fixed number of votes in each slot, with a payoff equal to Mr where M represents the number of votes controlled by the pool and R is the reward for a single correct and timely head vote. The events VP and NVP denote the cases where the pool votes and does not vote for BT1, respectively. The authors show that VP weakly dominates NVP, implying that acting compliantly is a better strategy for the staking pool. However, if the pool controls over WP at testers per slot, acting non-compliantly weakly dominates any other action leading to the existence of Nash equilibria where the adversary succeeds. The authors propose the DAG votes mechanism as an alternative to Ethereum's current reward mechanism. In this mechanism, each slot T plus 1 a tester signs all slot T head votes in its view at the beginning of slot T plus 1, with a signature of a slot T plus 1 a tester on a slot T vote called a slot evidence. A slot T a tester gains an attestation reward for its vote if the vote is included in any slot T greater than T block B within the canonical chain, and the vote is correct and timely with respect to B. The DAG votes mechanism reduces the adversary's influence over the attestation rewards, unless it controls half of the committee, and allows rewarding the slot T plus 1 committee for generating slot T evidences and the leaders for including the past votes and evidences. Here is a combined summary of the content from pages 17 to 20. The paper proposes a practical version of DAG votes to address communication and storage overheads in the main version. In this practical version, a subset of attestors is sampled in each slot to serve as aggregators, generating evidence for slot T attestations if the block of slot T plus 1 is not published or excludes some of the slot T attestations. Parameters NAG and NLIMIT are configured to ensure each subcommittee has more than NLIMIT non-adversarial available aggregators with high probability, guaranteeing timeliness verification of attestations. Each evidence is composed of three parts, the signature of the evidence generator, the aggregated attestation signature, and an aggregation list specifying which validators' attestations are included in the aggregated signature. The paper estimates the storage, computation, and communication overheads of the practical version under three scenarios, ideal, optimistic, and worst case. In the worst case scenario, the evidence size per block increases to 506.624 kilobytes, and the computational overhead increases to 256 NAG signature verifications. The paper highlights the importance of addressing commitment attacks on Ethereum's reward mechanism which can be achieved through the proposed practical version of DAG votes. Commitment attacks can lead to instability in the blockchain network and can be mitigated by considering commitment devices in the design of protocol mechanisms.
The authors explore the concept of commitment attacks on the reward mechanism in Ethereum's consensus layer, discussing aspects such as the sequence of play, deciding whether these attacks constitute best responses for rational attackers, and identifying equilibria when all participants benefit from the commitment ability. They provide an extensive list of references, delving into topics like aggregator selection, Altair, block voting, and Ethereum's roadmap, and discussing the concept of shuffling and its implications for the Ethereum network. The Ethereum reward mechanism is comprised of execution layer and consensus layer rewards. The consensus layer reward is further divided into attestation reward, proposing reward, and sync committee reward. The attestation reward is the largest part constituting 84.4% of the consensus layer rewards. To receive this reward, the attestation must be included in the beacon chain and be correct and timely. This involves agreeing with the view of the block proposer and matching the justified and target checkpoints of the epic. The LMDGHOST algorithm is crucial in identifying the canonical chain, and the index function is used to find the non-compliant block with the largest slot within a chain. Timely and correct votes are essential in the Ethereum network's consensus mechanism, focusing on head votes and their timeliness. Slashing rules aim to enforce accountable safety by removing validators that violate protocol rules. The concept of reorgs is introduced, where a block being reorged does not necessarily imply a liveness violation. Proof of theorems demonstrate how the game theoretic framework ensures that solo validators follow the game rule making the system a Nash equilibrium. The authors delve into the commitment attacks on Ethereum's reward mechanism, focusing on the sub-game perfect Nash equilibrium in the extended game. They present the payoff matrices for a solo slot validator and a solo slot leader, demonstrating that sending a compliant vote and proposing a compliant block are weakly dominant strategies. The analysis shows that there exists a sub-game perfect Nash equilibrium where all solo leaders and attesters follow the adversary's game, leading to a canonical chain after the end of slot P and violating safety and liveness. Furthermore, the authors demonstrate that for any epsilon greater than zero, the adversary with budget epsilon can ensure its success in all Nash equilibria by offering an epsilon PW amount of bribe to each slot I element of P, a tester to vote for a compliant block, using smart contracts on Ethereum. Additionally, the authors analyze the payoff matrix of the slot leader in the extended game, showing that under an honest minority assumption, LMD Ghost is still susceptible to the extended attack. They also present the payoff matrix of a solo validator in the simple game under the fixed validator set model, proving that voting for the parent block BT1 is a weakly dominant strategy for a solo validator. The authors provide a proof of theorem 12, which demonstrates that if all slot 1, P leaders propose compliant blocks and all slot 1, P attesters vote for compliant blocks, resulting in the reorg of the blocks from slots P plus 1, 0, this is a sub-game perfect Nash equilibrium. Lastly, the authors discuss an attack resembling the selfish mining attack in Nakamoto consensus, analyzing it under the fixed validator set model. This attack starts at the beginning of some slot T, where the number of adversarial slots in the interval T, T plus P is greater than or equal to the number of its non-adversarial slots, and slot T plus P is adversarial. The authors propose a selfish mining-inspired game to analyze the security of Ethereum's reward mechanism. In this game, an adversary generates a proof of leadership in adversarial slots within a specific range and sets a suggested game rule for attesters in each slot. The adversary publishes a sequence of adversarial blocks, and if the attesters follow the game rule, the weights of the non-adversarial fork and the adversarial fork will be equal, leading to the attack's success. The authors prove that a solo validator is incentivized to follow the game rule, resulting in the adversary's success. This implies that even coordination of strategies and forming stake pools might not be sufficient to disincentivize validators from following the game rule. The payoff matrix of a solo validator in the selfish mining-inspired game under the fixed validator set model is presented, showing that following the game rule weakly dominates following the honest protocol. The authors note that there exist Nash equilibria where the adversary is not successful, but the selfish mining-inspired attack gives a higher payoff to the attesters in the equilibria it succeeds. 
Furthermore, the authors discuss the performance comparison of their solution in an optimistic scenario, assuming each block includes 128 aggregated evidences for an earlier slot. The total size of aggregated evidences in each block is calculated, and the parameters NAG and NLIMIT are set such that the probability of the number of non-adversarial aggregators in a subcommittee becoming less than or equal to NLIMIT is less than 10 carat, 4. The computational overhead of the solution is also analyzed, considering the cost of signature verification, aggregation, and signing. The research also discusses the computational and communication overheads of a blockchain network focusing on Ethereum's consensus layer. It highlights the need for efficient verification and aggregation of attestations to ensure network security. The authors analyze the computational costs for aggregators, block proposers, and verifiers under both optimistic and worst-case scenarios. They also examine the impact of potential future Ethereum changes on their attacks, concluding that none of these modifications can mitigate the attack. The study emphasizes the importance of optimizing these processes to maintain network efficiency and security. Here is the combined summary. The Ethereum reward mechanism is analyzed from a game-theoretic perspective, revealing a vulnerability where a malicious slot leader can manipulate a testers from the previous slot to vote on an unrevealed transaction bundle, thereby penalizing the victim block builder and stealing the included maximal extractable value, MEV. This attack remains feasible even with the adoption of secret leader election, SLE, an in-protocol proposer builder separation, EPBS, which are designed to mitigate such attacks. Moreover, the paper highlights the implications of single-slot finality on Ethereum's security, demonstrating that while it can significantly reduce transaction confirmation time, it may not prevent the creation of equilibria where liveness can be violated for arbitrarily long slot sequences. This is a critical concern, as it can compromise the integrity of the blockchain. The economics of directed acyclic graph, DAG, votes are also examined, revealing that while they enable timely votes to be rewarded eventually, they do not prevent an adversary controlling multiple blocks from delaying the inclusion of slot T evidences in the canonical chain. This can influence attestation rewards, creating opportunities for malicious actors to exploit the system.